This is five on your side at 10, focused on you. Developing tonight, Interstate 64 near Hampton remains shut down after both eastbound and the westbound lanes flooded due to a water main break. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ann Allred. Several people were trapped in high water on I-64 near the Tam Avenue overpass. Others had to find a different route home. Five on your side's Robert Townsend joins us live from the scene. Robert. Hey there, Ann. Let me tell you, it is six hours and counting, and the water main is still not repaired at this hour. Take a look back there, and you can see this big mess. Again, the eastbound lanes of I-64 out here at the Tam Avenue overpass are still flooded, shut down, and closed to lots of drivers at this 10 o'clock hour. Crews are still trying to drain all that water that was several feet high just a few hours ago. Now here's a look at the massive mess and traffic tie ups from our drones eye view. Officials are telling us at the height of rush hour this Friday afternoon, a 30 inch water main suddenly broke flooded the eastbound lanes of I-64 in front of the St. Louis Zoo and caused major traffic tie-ups for several miles. A single lane of westbound traffic was slowly getting by. Now this afternoon, a mother and her two children were stranded in their partially submerged white SUV. Thankfully, the good news firefighters got the family out just in the nick of time. Andrea Herman also got stuck in this traffic nightmare. I work out in St. Anne and it usually takes me about 20 minutes to get home, but it took me about an hour and 10 minutes. And I got off at Big Bend, usually get off at Hampton, um, and all the back roads through Dogtown were bumper to bumper traffic. It's a manual valve. Uh, it, it's no secret to anyone that we do have an, an aging and older infrastructure in the city of St. Louis that we're working on. So that's likely why they're at both ends, as it was explained to me from the water department, uh, to actually get this shut down. And back here live, you can see again, traffic is now moving along two westbound lanes here at I-64 near the Tam Avenue overpass. And right now, no word on exactly when the broken water main will be fixed and exactly when things out here will be back to normal. Of course, we are tracking every minute of it. Live in downtown, Dogtown, I'm Robert Towson. Five on your side. New tonight, at least three people are dead after shootings at two separate locations in North St. Louis within a minute. The first shooting happened at the intersection of McLaren and Riverview Boulevard just after three this afternoon. Police say two men in a black Dodge Ram were driving when someone in another car approached the truck and fired several shots through the passenger side window before speeding off. Five Inner Sides' Robert Townsend spoke with a friend of the driver who was killed. A good guy, you know, a good family man. You know, good hard worker, you know, he had his business, you know, he's been cutting grass for the past 15 or 20 years. What do you think about the driver crashed into a street sign, knocked it down, and the truck ended on the front lawn outside some apartments near Grapp Avenue. One man died at the scene, the other died at a hospital. Around the same time, police responded to another shooting just six miles away in the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood. Police arrived in the 3600 block of Garfield Avenue where they found a man shot. He died at the scene. Police say these two shootings are not related and are still determining motives. Police are asking anyone with information about the shooting to call Crime Stoppers at 866-371-8477. An update on a story in South St. Louis. Police are investigating a violent break-in at a home on Humphrey Street. That's about a few blocks south of Tower Grove Park. Neighbors tell us the gray house where this happened has been problematic for years. They say with the activity they've witnessed and reported going unaddressed, it was only a matter of time. Five on your side's Travis Cummings has the story. Birds chirping and the making of a manicured lawn is the piece Tom Albright and his neighbors on Humphrey Street in South St. Louis long for. Sitting drinking a cup of coffee inside, heard about six or seven shots. Five minutes later, I heard sirens. Albrot lives just two doors down from where police say a man was shot Friday morning. Investigators believe a man and a woman broke into the home and shot the owner. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty scary. But Albrot says this great house where the commotion was has always been the core of confusion. They're out there at 3 o'clock in the morning, front and back, arguing, fighting. The, the girl that lived there, the father moved her out. He's the owner of the property. They moved her out, and these people wouldn't leave. He walked us through the back alley to tell us what those people have been up to, what he and his neighbors have been reporting to police. This was unbelievable. He had a box of paint cans, spray paint cans, 
and he was taking them and throwing them in a fire, and they were blowing up and shooting out all over the place. Police say they've received and responded to two calls at the house in the last year, one for a disturbance, the other foot patrol. Just last week, neighbors say there was a nuisance letter posted on the property, but the trouble still persisted. We've been dealing with this for going on 10 years now. Uh, it's just this was the worst. I think we knew this was going to happen eventually. These longtime residents want rest. I, I'd like to see maybe the courts get some new laws passed where they can, you know, force these people out. Because I know right now they haven't forced them out once. This afternoon, the city confirmed the property is currently under notice, and they met with the owner regarding the problems in early February, to which he agreed to keep things in check. The Problem Properties Task Force consistently monitors this property and says the owner will be responsible if things keep happening. Shootings like this are why regional business and civic leaders are issuing a call to action. Today, they released a report outlining their concerns and announced a regional summit. So how is this discussion going to differ from the others that have happened through the years? Five on your side's Christine Beyer sat down with the criminolog criminologist behind the report who says there is a solution that works. It's called focused deterrence. What it means is to focus very forcefully on the relatively few people who account for or count disproportionately for uh, uh, both the perpetration of violence but also violence victimization. University of Missouri St. Louis criminologist Rick Rosenfeld says it's a strategy that will work and the man who literally wrote the book on the approach Thomas Aft is willing to get it started in St. Louis for free. This is one of the most promising moments to do something effective and quite important to improve uh, the health and safety and prosperity of our region. The strategy puts criminals in a room with police, prosecutors, social service leaders, clergy, and sometimes their own family members. And the message is essentially the violence has to stop. We obviously know who you are. We'll pull all available levers if we have to to get you off the street. In the meantime, if you want out of this life, here are services and supports that can help you take a different path. Now, regional business and economic leaders are hoping the people in power here will put it into motion. They are convening a crime summit next week where APT will outline his strategy. Jason Hall, the CEO of Greater St. Louis, says it's a crucial conversation. And he says the pending resignation of St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner helps with momentum for change. We needed change at the Circuit Attorney's Office in the city of St. Louis, and that change is coming. And, and we applaud the governor and the mayor and others uh, that are working on it. This is a region-wide issue, and we all have to step up, not pointing fingers at each other, but say we're in this together, because if, when we solve this together, that means more jobs, a safer community for everyone. Christine Byers. Five on your side. The Regional Crime Summit will take place from 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Wednesday at the Eric P. Newman Education Center at Washington University School of Medicine. Newly released dash cam video is giving us a look at an early Tuesday morning shooting that left a trooper hurt and the suspect dead. It happened on I-64 near Mount Vernon, Illinois. A warning, this video is graphic. Troopers responded to a call for a driver needing assistance. That's where they found 23-year-old Brandon Griffin and 31-year-old Christine Santos, who gave the officer fake names. Officers found out that Griffin and Santos were wanted for felony charges. The video shows Griffin and the trooper struggling before shots are fired. Santos was taken into custody. Griffin was killed, and the trooper is recovering at home. Today was the last day of the Missouri legislative session, and members of the state Senate went home without passing anything. Tension was growing in Jefferson City this morning as legislators gave a final push to pass legislation. Senator Bill Eigel pushed for his bill about cutting personal property taxes, while others pushed for passing a sports wagering bill. This led to a filibuster where Senator Eigel talked about Star Wars and began to read a book from Ronald Reagan. As we draw near to Mother's Day this weekend, we have a list of some of the most popular baby names. With the Mother Day spirit continuing, the list for the most popular baby names for 2020 is out. Topping the list is Olivia and Liam for the fourth and sixth year in a row, respectively. After Liam, the top four names for boys are Noah, Oliver, James, and Elijah. For the girls, it's Emma, 
Charlotte, Amelia, and Sophia making the list. This year, the name Luna made the list for the first time. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell joins us now with the weather first forecast. Today really felt St. Louis-y, nice and soupy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're starting to get that humidity, and it gets even more so tomorrow. So a little on the steamy side here in St. Louis. That could lead to a thunderstorm or two, but we didn't have much around St. Louis today. Probably won't have much for most of us as we head into tomorrow. Looking out at Lambert, things are pretty quiet there at the airport at the moment. A few flight delays, but didn't see any cancellations. We're at 76 right now, dew point 65. That dew point may nudge up a little bit tomorrow. 82, your top temperature today. Skies are partly cloudy to mostly clear across our region now. We've eluded the showers and thunderstorms here. They've been pretty prolific here across Nebraska, spreading into Iowa. Those storms in Nebraska were producing some big tornadoes earlier today. They've weakened a bit. Then we go back down here into northwest Missouri, eastern Kansas, into Oklahoma. A few more showers and thunderstorms here. Some of them are strong to severe, but they're it's not a solid line and they'll tend towards weakening as they try to nudge to the east and that big active weather down there into Texas. We don't have to worry about that, at least not at the moment. So weather fronts, you've got the warm front lifting north. That gets us very humid tomorrow, but this is not a cold front out to the west that's going to plow in here tomorrow. If it did, we would have widespread showers and thunderstorms. That's what we're really lacking is something to force these storms to develop. So instead, we're stuck with a smattering of shower and thunderstorm chances. Not everybody gets wet. Much of the day is on the dry side. Late in the morning, early in the afternoon, we may see some of those clouds growing into a few showers and thunderstorms. But again, it's a big if. And that means we're probably okay for most of the air show at Scott Air Force Base. Now, the Blue Angels are supposed to be doing their program at about three o'clock. And remember, you see one, two, three, and four. Always watch for five. We learned that from Tracy Hinson this week. All right, here's what's going on on Sunday. It's Mother's Day. We should start without much in the way of rain. As we progress through the day, well, it's warm, it's muggy, and we do have something coming our way that could inspire showers and storms to develop, especially later in the day into the evening. So keep that in mind if you have Mother's Day plans for the evening hours. In the meantime, tomorrow, Sunday, both days, there is dry time in there and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, looking at quite a bit of dry time there as well. But notice how much cooler it gets as we head towards early next week. Not only drier, but cooler. We'll lose the humidity then too. Tomorrow's pretty muggy, Ann. Yeah, sounds like a great work week next week. Mm -hmm. Scott, thank you. That is all of our time here at 10. Corey Miller joins us now with Five on Your Sideline.